Hello YouTube and Comic Vine. I'm the Game Raging Psycho, or E. Crollo as you might know me on the Vine, and I'm back for another comic book review. And today I'm doing something very special and something particularly hated by the comic book community at this point. I'm going to be reviewing the Dying Wish story uh, of Amazing Spider-Man, which is basically Spider-Man 698 to Spider-Man 700, and the Superior Spider-Man number one that came out about two weeks ago. So, both of these have received generally negative reception from both, you know, critics, the fans, and some retailers as well who have voiced their own displeasure of the story. Uh, uh, the writer Dan Slott has even received numerous death threats from the fans who claim that they will kill him unless he fixes this whole mess, which I think is just insane. I mean, a, it, this might be a poorly written story, but do, does a writer really deserve to die just because his his horrible story is going to mess up your character for about six months? And when I say six months, uh, I mean that Marvel has a god-awful track record when it comes to keeping s changes to the status quo. And since we have a S Amazing Spider-Man sequel coming out in about a year, I can almost guarantee you that Peter Parker will be back as Spider-Man in about six months. Now, I don't actually hate the idea of a bad guy becoming a hero. Marvel has done this numerous times. Loki is kind of an anti-hero. Magneto was also a hero for a little while. Now he's sort of in the anti-hero position. Doctor Doom became a hero. And... Um, I think that's I think that's about it. Uh, Red Skull pretty much stayed bad, but yeah, Marvel has a good track rec track record of making their good guys, their bad guys, sorry, uh, good guys or anti heroes. So um, I actually thought that if this story could be well written and make sense and consistent, then I think it could you know, transcend all the hate that it was getting, but it just doesn't. Uh, 698, I have to say, this is probably the worst issue of all of the ones I'm reviewing today, because it's a pretty big tease. Uh, it's an entire issue of seeing Spider-Man basically get back to basics. He is the happy-go-lucky superhero who, you know, goes around the city beating up criminals, saving grandmas and kittens and stuff. You know, the classic Spider-Man stories. He basically tells Mary Jane that he wants to get back with her, you know, it, the whole, about, through the entire issue, it feels like we are finally seeing one more day be erased. Then, then we get the big reveal where Doc Ock uh, basically tells us that he used one of his uh, small robots to switch his mind with Peter Parker's. And since Doc Ock Doc Ock's body is falling apart and he has mere hours left to live, Peter Parker is left uh, in the S.H.I.E.L.D. base in prison to slowly wither away and die while Doc Ock will live his life and become the new Spider-Man. That's basically issue 698. Th there's nothing necessarily bad with that, but the whole issue is just a tease. It just makes you think that Dan Slott is finally reversing one more day when, in reality, he's just fucking with us. Uh, 699 is Spider-Man sort of interacting with his bad guys, and this is actually an issue that I liked because we see, because we kind of see Peter Parker acting as Doc Ock. He's using his um, technological knowledge and he's using his remaining resources to gather up the Sinister Six so that they can break him out of the Shield prison. And I really, really liked this because it gave us more insight into the Lizard. It showed how a lot of the bad guys that have worked with Doc Ock actually respect him and they will come to aid him when he calls them to. And I actually really, really like this issue. Uh, 699.1 is basically a setup issue where we get set up for the Morbius ongoing series. So it's virtually pointless to the main plot. Uh, then we get to issue 700 and this is where things really, really start to fall apart. Because in issue 698, Doc Ock perfectly acted like Peter Parker. He dressed like Peter Parker, he talked like Peter Parker, he had access to all of his memories and stuff. And there was, and I actually thought that we were seeing Peter Parker. He acted perfectly like both Spider-Man and Peter Parker in and out of costume. Then, once he reveals himself 
to Parker, who's in Doc's body, he acts completely like Doc Ock. He talks in that whole pseudo-Shakespearean crap way of talking of, What is the meaning of this? Explain thyself. Blasphemy, you dolts. That's basically how he talks in issue 700. And this makes absolutely no sense, because we know that he can act and talk like Peter Parker perfectly. So why the hell is he suddenly talking like Ock and possibly raising more suspicion onto himself? This makes the the story very inconsistent, and this is a big, big problem that's going to persist throughout the story. Also, this also this creates the Smallville effect where the main character has this big, big secret. However, he is so terrible at hiding his secret from other people, especially to his supporting cast, it's so obvious. However, uh, the writers are terrible, so they basically think of the stupidest, most contrived reasons for why the supporting cast doesn't suspect him at all. So everyone, including Mary Jane, Aunt May, the Avengers, everyone comes off as a complete fucking moron, just like in Smallville, where Clark's secret is so obvious, I wanted to smash them all against the face with a barbed wired baseball bat and tell them dipshits. This guy has superpowers. How do you not understand this? And it's the same thing here. It's just so obvious everyone looks like a complete an utter moron. Then Peter Parker decides that he's going to use Doc Ock's mind, mind switching robot to switch his minds, uh, you know, back to the way they used to be. And for a while, it uh, the plan seems to be working. Then the big fight happens, and Doc Ock suddenly he's like, "Wow, Spider-Man must have been holding back all this time. I like, I just killed a scorpion." Man, man, it must take great responsibility to use these powers. And so he basically goes from evil, psychotic, bad guy to a transformed superhero. And the problem is, is that this is so incredibly rushed and it comes out of nowhere. That is the problem with a lot of Slot's Spider-Man stories. He basically hypes them up. And then they are completely full of nonsensical bullshit. They are wildly inconsistent. And they are so rushed. You know, Doc Ock, like I said, goes from being a bad guy to, to like, uh, the new Spider-Man. He, he suddenly just wants to become a superhero. And it makes no sense. He, he just kills Scorpion, and then he's all like, Man, with great power comes great responsibility. It makes no sense. And uh, at the end, he basically beats up Peter Parker in his old body some more. Peter Parker dies. But before he can truly die, uh, Doc Ock basically absorbs all of Peter's experiences throughout his entire life. You know, the death of Uncle Ben, the death of Gwen Stacy, all of his battles and stuff. And so he basically has access to, com to all of Peter's memories, experiences, fighting style, everything. And Peter Parker dies, and then Doc Ock basically says, I will honor you, I will, no, he basically says it like this, I shall honor you, Peter Parker, but then I shall become better than you, I shall show the world a better Spider-Man, better than you ever were, I shall become the superior Spider-Man. Wow, dude, you are really showing that guy respect, I mean... Uh, he basically gave you his entire life, he basically told you to become a superhero, and then five seconds after he dies, you talk smack about him and proclaim you're going to be a better Spider-Man than him. Wow, Doc, you're a real inspiration. But wait, it gets worse. Because in Superior Spider-Man number one, the inconsistency becomes worse, and in the first issue of this new ongoing series, Slot is already setting up Peter Parker's return and the fall of Doc Ock as Spider-Man. How does he do this, you may ask? Uh, well, first of all, he continues the inconsistency by, by making Doc Ock act completely like Doc Ock and Peter Parker's body. He does not sound like Peter Parker, he does not dress like Peter Parker, and no one suspects this. It continues to annoy the fuck out of me. Like, 
Why the hell would you copy Smallville? Smallville is one of the worst superhero related pieces of media ever created. It's fucking horrible. So why would you copy a stupid formula from Smallville into a Spider-Man story? But then the inconsistency gets even worse. Because remember when I said that Doc Ock got access to all of Peter Parker's experiences, he basically has his kung fu knowledge, he has all this stuff, and then when he acts like Spider-Man, he is completely incompetent. He gets his ass whooped in his first battle, and he is a complete noob as Spider-Man, despite the fact of having Peter Parker's experiences, which doesn't make a lick of sense. Then in the office, there is this really, really over-the-top scene where uh, Max, uh, Peter Parker's boss, uh, where he, in, the, in, in Star Labs where he works at, he's all like, well, Peter, maybe it's dangerous for you to be like building all these weapons for Spider-Man. Maybe you should tone down and stop helping Spider-Man. And then... And then he's like, well, your inventions, your inventions are... And then Peter Parker just interrupts him and says, They are brilliant. Look at this. Look at this device. This device shall change the very face of the world. I shall become the greatest scientist ever. <laughs> and he just sounds like an over-the-top B... No, not even B, like a D-movie a uh, super villain doctor dude he even dresses like that he has like the big white lab coat the big black gloves on his head and he even has the goggles on his head it, it, he just looks ridiculous and he acts absolutely ridiculous and this is the scene which pretty much proves that slot is already tearing the story down and making it pointless because max says you are going to become a great scientist, Peter Parker, and your inventions will make you famous. Doc Ock immediately flips shit, and he immediately says, oh, oh, All of my inventions, all of my accomplishments, they will not go to Dr. Otto Octavius. They will go to Peter Parker and not me. How dare they not recognize my genius? And that one scene just immediately screamed, yeah, this is not going to last more than six months. Then we get another over-the-top scene where he basically stares at MJ's breasts all night and then he starts acting like Batman. Basically, since he can't fight worth a shit for, for I, I don't know, whatever reason, he basically uses his inventions and lures the uh, villains the new Sinister Six that he's fighting to a location where he basically changes the environment to suit his needs. So he basically compensates for being a horrible fighter by becoming Batman. He actually creates a whole bunch of contingency plans how to take all these guys out. And I know a lot of people that were complaining that Spider-Man is becoming more and more like Batman by creating devices and stuff and gadgets that are made specifically to fight his bad guys. But this issue just screamed rip-off of Batman. Hell, even Batman never goes to an alley, puts a whole bunch of shit on it like, like a liquid that makes it hard to run on or he doesn't put mines and stuff all over the place. He, not even Batman goes to a place before a battle and modifies it to suit his own needs. Why? Because Batman's a good fighter. And on some level, you could argue because Doc is a bad fighter, he has to rely on his gadgets. But that doesn't make any fucking sense because you have superpowers. Even Spider-Man didn't have any formal form of martial arts training beforehand. He only recently got it because he lost his Spider-Sense. And also, the Spider-Sense is an automatic win weapon because it warns you of every possible danger. So again, it doesn't make any sense for Doc Ock to be a horrible fighter, and it just makes him look like a ripoff of Batman. Another thing that bugged me, but it, it, but it, but I think I figured it out is Doc Ock basically claws people with his hands, and I I didn't understand that. I just thought that was some sort of uh, some sort of device, like at the tip of his fingers, like claws or something. But I figured out that Spider Man can actually use his wall crawling abilities on people, and this creates a cutting effect. He can basically slice people 
up with his fingertips, but he rarely, but Peter Parker rarely used it. However, this creates another issue because Doc Ock says, I clawed the guy and I put a tracer in him. So how did you do that? Did you like put nanites into the tip of your fingers? Did you know you were going to set up the battle beforehand? It, I, I don't know. I don't know. It doesn't make any sense whatsoever. However, the highlight of this disaster is when uh, when Doc Ock is going to like kill this guy. He's like clawing at him. He goes to kill him. And then the ghost of Peter Parker shows up and stops him. And he basically talks to us, the reader, and says, No, I'm not out of this fight yet. Peter Parker is not dead. I will return. Peter Parker will be Spider-Man again. And that's the end of the first issue. So yeah, then I went, this thing is not going to last more than three months, let alone six. So thank you, Dan Slott. You not only made another pointless Marvel change to a character's status quo, but you have already laid the groundwork for the return of Peter Parker, thereby making your story badly written, poorly plotted out, incredibly rushed, and completely pointless. So thank you, Dan Slott. I now, I now I don't have to waste my money buying your crap. So what's my score for The Dying Wish and Superior Spider-Man number one? Uh, yeah, you take a guess. It's a one out of ten. No, no, not even a one out of ten. This is a zero. A zero out of ten. I don't give a shit if the art is okay. For me, it's the writing that is key. And the writing is just all around pretty bad. So this gets a zero out of ten. Do not buy this, and I will guarantee you that in six months Peter Parker will be back as Spider-Man. So buy that. So then go buy the issue where Peter Parker returns and avoid this crap altogether. And also, Joe Casada, uh, thank you for once again fucking Spider-Man. I know you hate the character and you want to destroy him as much as you, as much as you possibly can, but. Um, yeah, go fuck yourself, you fat bastard. You will never kill Spider-Man. No matter how hard you try, he will rise above your bullshit and become a well-written character again. I still do not understand why the hell Dan Slott is on this book, and I still don't understand why Brian Michael Bendis hasn't been given the, the writing rights to The Amazing Spider-Man. But uh, who cares? We're going to put him on like 50 other X-Men, Guardians of the Galaxy, and Avengers books. So that's okay, but that's another rant for another day. So yeah, The Dying Wish, 0 out of 10. Superior Spider-Man, 0 out of 10. Avoid them both. Don't buy them. Thank you for listening, and I'm out. <laughs>